Got some past exam questions on alkanes you can test yourself with. So if you want to have a go at these, the link to the questions is in the description of the video. So just click on that, download the questions, have a go, and then play the video for the answers. Okay, so question one. All of the molecules have got the CH2Cl on the right-hand carbon of the CC double bond. However, only in D is the other Cl on the same side of the carbon carbon double bond. So you can see D they're on the same side, they're both pointing up, whereas on um, A, B and C, they're diagonally opposite. Okay, so moving on to question two, we've got to draw the structures of the two possible products of the reaction of compound D with hydrogen chloride. Just a reminder that when hydrogen chloride reacts, the double bond will um, break open and you can either put the hydrogen there and the chlorine there or vice versa. So these are the two possible products. These can be either way around, by the way. One doesn't have to be that version and two doesn't have to be that version. So for the next part of the question, we've got to explain which of the products will form in a greater amount. It's all to do with the stability of the carbocation intermediate. So to form this one, that's the carbocation intermediate, which is a secondary carbocation. That's because the positive carbon's got two carbons directly attached. Um, the, this product is formed via this tertiary carbocation intermediate. So you've got one, two, three carbons directly attached to the positive carbon. This is the more stable intermediate, and so therefore you're going to get more of this product. So in words, I'm just saying the product formed from the more stable tertiary carbocation intermediate will form in the greater amount. And the last part of the question is a mole calculation. So we've got to calculate the mass of each product formed. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn that 4.125 grams of D into moles by dividing by the MR. So that's how many moles of D we're starting with. Um, the moles of products will be well, the 95% one will give 0.95 times the moles, which is that number. The 5% one will give that number of moles. And then what we do is convert them to grams by multiplying by the MR of the product, which is 146.5. So 95% will give 5.22 grams of product. 5% will give us that many grams of product. Next question, describe how a sigma bond forms. So sigma bonds form when a shared pair of electrons formed from the end-to-end -end or direct overlap of two orbitals. The shape and bond angle around each carbon of the double bond in propane. So that one and that one, just it's all down to the number of electron regions. Remember, a double bond counts as one region, so around that carbon, one, two, three regions, that one, one, two, three. So they're both the same angle, 120 degrees, trigonal plane is shape. That's because you've got three bonding regions, equal repulsion. Next part of the question is the mechanism for the reaction of propane with bromine. So first thing, dipole across the BRBR bond, slightly positive, closest to the double bond. And we take a curly arrow from the middle of the double bond onto the slightly positive uh, bromine and then a curly arrow from the middle of the BRBR bond onto the delta minus bromine. Obviously that's going to break that bond. The intermediate, well I've chosen to put the bromine on this carbon here, um, which means there's a positive charge on the other carbon. It can be the other way around. The Bromine that breaks off is a Br minus ion. So show that pair of electrons so you can take your curly arrow from the pair of electrons and form that new covalent bond um, to the positive carbon. And then the final thing we've got to say is what does a curly arrow represent in a reaction mechanism? It's the movement of an electron pair. Next part of the question, why does PENT1A not show stereoisomerism? It's because one of the carbon atoms of the CC double bond has two identical, or in the case of protonine, hydrogen atoms. So that carbon there has got two H's on, which means it can't show EZ isomerism. Next part of the question is kind of testing our understanding of cis-trans isomerism. So just a reminder, cis-trans is where you have an identical atom or group of atoms 
on each carbon of the CC double bond. So the isomer that shows it for pentene is pent-2-ene because when you put the double bond at carbon 2, you've got hydrogens on each carbon of the double bond. So that's an identical atom and therefore when you have both of the identical atoms on the same side of the double bond, you've got the cis isomer. When they're diagonally opposite, you've got the trans isomer. So cis trans identical atom or group of atoms on each carbon of the CC double bond. It doesn't have to be a hydrogen, by the way, but it is in this case. And the final question is we've got to decide whether this is the E or the Z isomer. So we've got to employ the SIP rules, the Kahn Ingold Prelog rules. This carbon's easy because it's straightforward. Um, fluorine has a higher atomic number than carbon, so it has priority. On this one, on this carbon, you've got two carbons directly attached. So we've got to look at what's attached to these carbons. So on the CH3, you've got three H's. On this one, you've got two H's and an O. So OHH is typically how we'd write it. That oxygen's obviously got a higher atomic number than any of those hydrogens. So therefore, this group will have priority. They're on diagonally opposite sides of the double bond. So this is the E isomer.